Hello mountain bikers and welcome back to your favorite gear show. May is an exciting month for us here at Vital because this is the time of year when we run our renowned and well-respected audience survey. Your chance to make your voice heard and let your fellow mountain bikers know what's good in the world of mountain biking gear. If you'd like to participate and you haven't done so already, head on over to our website and you should be presented with a pop-up link to the survey. We'll leave a direct link in the description below as well. Actually, today is a very exciting day for me as well because it's new bike day. I just unboxed this thing this morning. You'll be seeing a lot more of it going forward, so stay tuned. As for today's show, we've got a bunch of fresh new apparel and some new shoes to talk you through. But before we get into the reviews, time for our customary industry news roundup with a month in a minute. Let's dig in. Eulins just unveiled a limited edition run of factory parts in signature yellow. Better hurry up and talk to your dealer if you want some. These will sell out fast. TransX has jumped into the wireless dropper post game with their new EDP01, set to retail for US$499, making it one of the most affordable wireless options out there. We've got one inbound for some testing, so look out for that review to drop soon. Nukeproof had a busy month, launching the all-new Horizon Pro wheel set and their 2023 range of riding apparel. Iconic skate, surf and snow brand Volcom has stepped into the mountain bike world for the first time with a trail pant and a short. More details on our site. Pivot dropped the third generation of its Mach 4 SL, featuring a lighter frame, refined suspension kinematics and updated geometry. Link to the full review in the description below. Comensal has launched two new eMTB models with Bosch motors, marking the first time the brand looks beyond Shimano to power its e-bikes. Canyon has updated the Spectral on with a 160mm fork, Shimano's latest EP801 motor and connectivity to Canyon's new e-app. Back in the analog world, YT dropped the Dirt Love Core 1, offering a high-performance frame with a very affordable build. Got a derailleur hanger emergency? SOS Hanger has your back with over 1,200 hanger models in stock and ready to ship out at a moment's notice. On the tire front, Onza dropped the Svelte, an XC model which combines efficiency, grip and comfort on fast and hard packed terrain. And to wrap up this new section, Deity just introduced the CZ40, Cam Zinc's signature handlebar featuring a whopping 40mm of rise. How about that? A new wireless dropper, eh? Can't wait to test it to see if it's a legit contender. Alright then, time to get into this month's reviews. First up, a couple of exciting new shoe options from Specialized. When Specialized dropped the updated 2FO line of flat pedal shoes at the end of 21, we got very excited. It was the first time that any company had actually managed to produce a shoe with as much grip as 510. The 2FO Roost shoe quickly became one of our favorites for all kinds of riding, but some people didn't get along so well with the suede uppers. Fast forward to today, and the Roost is now available in a synthetic version. This makes the shoe a little bit sturdier around the top of the foot, while keeping everything else exactly the same. The outsole features the third generation of the super grippy Slipknot. Yes, this stuff really is as grippy as 510's Stealth Rubber. As for the shoe, it's really comfy, wrapping itself around your foot without being as constrictive as the more full-on the itch version. It's also a very light shoe in terms of actual weight. Equipped with specialized body geometry insole, it provides ample arch support and holds your foot in a very comfortable and dynamic position on the bike. Power transfer is excellent and the stiffness of the sole is perfect both for all day pedaling missions and days in the bike park. One of our favorites just got a bit more favorite. Specialized also just dropped a whole new shoe called the 2FO Method. This Vans inspired shoe was made for people who want a street style shoe offering a more relaxed fit with a sole that lets you feel more of what is going on between the foot and the pedal. It features a slipknot outsole, so the grip is still outstanding, but the midsole is a lot softer than the Roost, for example, which allows it to bend and conform to the terrain or to the pedal. The uppers are made from canvas, and they are a lot thinner and less padded than on the Roost as well. On the bike, the method provides a much less performance-oriented experience. The pedal makes itself felt through the shoe, and the thin uppers also let your foot move around in the shoe a bit more. The level of protection over the top of the foot is quite low, and although the method also features a body geometry insole just like the Roost, there's a lot less support for the foot overall. In terms of sizing, there's a bit less space in the toe area compared to the Roost. You may even consider going up half a size if you're between sizes. We imagine this one suiting riders who really need to feel what their bike is doing, or who just want a shoe to hang out in all day while being able to hop on a bike at a moment's notice for a little pump track or jump session. Created by legendary gear designer Pete Fox, Renan is a moto and mountain bike gear company that handcrafts premium racewear in the US. Introduced at the end of 2022, the Unite jersey and the H-Pant are their first bike-specific pieces focused on balancing performance, comfort and durability. 
The Unite jersey features Renan's stretchy, moisture-wicking dricycle fabric on the front and sleeve panels. The back panel and inside of the sleeves use a stretch mesh fabric for increased airflow, and the forearms are made from a no-snag, abrasion-resistant woven fabric with a DWR coating. The jersey has an athletic fit, and the collar features a loop design that helps eliminate discomfort caused by the neck seam. And like Renan's moto jerseys, riders can pay extra to have their name or number sublimated on the back of the jersey. The DH pant is made from a durable, four-way stretch fabric with stretch mesh panels behind the knee and calf to accommodate knee pads and provide ventilation. And Renan again uses their dricycle fabric on the inside of the pants to provide comfort and regulate moisture. A traditional fly cam buckle and zipper pull the waist tight, and a single hidden mesh zipper pocket is located on the left hip, offering enough room to fit a phone, keys and lift pass. To round out your kit, the GC2 is Renan's premium minimalist slip-on glove designed to offer maximum feel. It features a molded neoprene cuff, single layer genuine clarino palm, and Italian warp knit fabric on the top of the hand for increased abrasion resistance and stretch recovery. Led by Pete Fox's lifelong experience of developing gear, it should be no surprise that Renan's first mountain bike specific kit is extremely comfortable, well-fitting and durable. The DH pant is a little thicker and heavier due to its two-layer construction. However, the snug fit and stretch fabric keep the pants from feeling bulky or restrictive on the trail, and the lining fabric was super soft on our skin. We had no issues fitting padded shorts or knee pads underneath, and the inseam was deep enough to allow the waistband to rest just above our hips. The downside of the more robust construction of the DH pant was that they ran a tad hot. The mesh panels along the back of the leg did provide some ventilation, but we don't see ourselves reaching for the DH pants to go for a pedal. The single thigh pocket was large enough to fit our phone and car keys, however, we wouldn't mind a second pocket to avoid stuffing all our belongings in just the one pocket. The Unite jersey offered a nice athletic cut that laid close to our body without being too tight. The thoughtful mesh panels on the back of the sleeves and the entire back kept the jersey from being as warm as the pants, making it a more usable piece of gear for bike park laps or shoulder season pedals. Our favorite aspect of the Unite jersey was the no-snag woven fabric used on the top and outside of the forearms. It provided more protection from bushes than most jerseys, and the DWR coating kept our sleeves from getting heavy with water during a few wet rides. Finally, the GC2 gloves are one of the best-fitting slip-on gloves we've ever worn. Ideal for riders who like a thin, minimalistic glove, the ergonomic fit eliminates any bunching in the palms, and the additional gusset in the fingertips creates a snug fit with no irritating seams. The warp knit fabric on the top of the hand is noticeably tougher feeling than what's used on most slip-on gloves, and did a great job protecting our hands from being whipped by bushes. They do lack many perforated vents, causing our hands to sweat more than usual. Overall, Renan's first mountain bike kit offers gravity-focused riders race-inspired, US-made gear that delivers exceptional durability and comfort for days when you are lapping the bike park or shuttling your favorite downhill track. New Zealand-based Mons Royale takes a slightly different approach to creating riding apparel, utilizing one of their home country's natural resources in the process, merino wool. Mons claims that merino wool fiber offers natural qualities that are useful when creating performance apparel. We've been testing out a few of their latest pieces to see if the claims hold true. Starting out with the Redwood Aircon jersey, this one is billed as the ultimate enduro jersey made for all kinds of conditions thanks to the Aircon 140 fabric that's said to be cool when it's hot and hot when it's cold. It's got perforated and breathable panels in strategic areas, a drop tail cut, a small zippered pocket and a goggle wipe inside the lower hem. The Tarn jersey features extra durable and breathable merino shift mesh back and panels, a drop tail cut for extra coverage and the same hidden goggle wipe as the Redwood. When things get chillier and you find yourself needing a bit more protection from the elements, the wind jersey is the next thing to reach for in your garment bag. Built on the same base of tarn merino fabric as the previous jersey, the wind jersey adds a panel of wind-resistant ripstop polyester fabric to the front to help repel the cold. You also get long raglan sleeves and a hidden goggle wipe. Moving on to the leg side, the Virage bike shorts are made for most kinds of riding, built around a durable fabric mix of recycled polyester and merino wool. There's a single large zippered pocket, a zippered and buttoned fly with an extra velcro patch under the buttons, and an elastic belt provided to help you trim the waistline to fit. There are no adjusters built into the short itself. The short is sold without a comfort liner, but there are several to choose from in the Mons Royal catalog. The Enduro Merino Aircon liner features the same aircon fabric as the Redwood jersey mentioned earlier, with 10mm of comfort padding. The Epic liner uses merino shift panels and a thinner 6mm pad. Both come with elastic waistbands and silicone grippers around the lower hems to help them stay in place. On the trail, we were won over by the soft fabrics and functional cuts of the Mons Royal jerseys. The merino fabrics do indeed do a great job of managing your body temperature, and they dry out every bit as quickly as advertised once they get wet. Naturally odor-free, Mons says you don't even have to wash them after each ride, and we'd agree that this is indeed possible. We still like a fresh jersey for each ride though, call us spoiled. 
The aircon fabric is best suited to warmer climates, while the wind jersey really cranks up your core temp as the mercury drops. A great choice for high alpine riding, where wind chill can be a thing even on warmer days. As for the short, we really appreciated the functional cut and the super comfy fabric. It's very light, yet sturdy enough to deal with proper abuse. Once again, it deals with heat and sweat exceptionally well, making it ideal for summer. We love the pant-like cut and the absence of waist adjusters that give this short a super clean look. Just make sure you get the sizing right as you can only ever sink this one down. It has very little stretchiness available around the waist. The pocket sits in a functional enough spot. We typically prefer our pockets around the front of the thigh, but we never felt our cargo move around too much during riding with this one. We certainly do wish there were two pockets though. We don't like storing multiple items in one spot, especially if one of them is a phone. We paired our short up with both liners, with equally good results. If you need a lot of cushioning, the Merino Aircon liner should be perfect. The fabric does a great job of staying comfortable when things heat up, and the chamois pad works well. If you typically get by with a bit less, you may prefer the less bulky feel of the Merino Shift version. All in all, the Mons Royal stuff does what it says on the box. The lightweight fabrics do a great job of managing your body temperature while dealing with the abuses of mountain biking. Is there any itchiness from the wool? Well, this particular guy is quite sensitive to that. Blame it on growing up in Sweden and being made to wear a bunch of home-knit, very itchy wool sweaters. And yes, there's a tiny hint of that when you first slip on a Mons jersey, but I soon enough got used to it and it didn't bother me at all while riding. Either way, it's well worth it for the other qualities this fabric has to offer. Okay then, moving on, we have one more outfit to review for you today, this time from Scottish apparel and protection specialist, Endura. Built from the same blueprints as Endura's best-selling MT500 burner line, the new Burner Light long sleeve jersey and pants provide similar durability and comfort, but in a much lighter and airier construction for those hot sunny days on the bike. The Burner Light pant is made from a four-way stretch nylon and elastan fabric and features a DWR finish to repel water and mud and laser cut perforations along the back of the knee to increase airflow. The fit is comfortably snug with plenty of room and stretch to wear padded shorts and knee pads underneath. Two vertical zippered pockets on the front of the thighs offer plenty of room for phone, keys or multi-tool. Waist closure is handled by two low-profile velcro straps and a front zipper with velcro and snap buttons hold the pants snugly in place. The Burner Light jersey is made from a fast wicking, lightweight polyester and elastan mesh fabric with woven sleeve panels. The fit of the jersey is standard to slim, with enough room to fit low-profile body armor underneath. Laser cut perforations throughout the body and sleeves increase airflow, and the shoulders feature silicone grippers to hold backpack straps in place. On the trail, both pieces of gear offered exceptional comfort, mobility and breathability. The Burner Light pants fit reasonably snug, but were less tight than most trail-focused pants these days. The material is super stretchy and lightweight without feeling too thin, and the cut of the legs offers plenty of room for knee pads without feeling baggy near the ankles. The waistband sat high on our hips, keeping the pants from sliding down, and the velcro closure functioned as intended, holding the pants in place. The Burner Light jersey was one of the lightest and best breathing gravity focused long sleeve jerseys we've worn. The mesh fabric and perforated vents along the sleeves, chest and back helped manage heat, and once we were sweating, the jersey did a good job of expelling heat. Our only complaint is the jersey sleeves are quite baggy in the forearm, which caused bunching around our wrists. Overall, the Burner Light kit is ideal for those hot days when you plan to spend hours on the trail and need comfortable gear that won't cause you to overheat. Whether you are getting out for a pedal or riding a chairlift, the Burner Light kit offers exceptional performance with subtle colorways and a full size range to satisfy most riders. Okay then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.